can't believe I'm doing this. Good morning internet, it is 10.30 in the morning and welcome back to the channel. My plans for today uh, changed a little bit, or well, I was planning to ride on today, but here the weather is good today, but where I was planning, uh, the weather is pretty bad. So I thought, you know what, it's better to stay one more day here in El Calafate, in Argentina, where I am now, than just to uh, ride in the rain. So I'm gonna do a small local day of exploring, which is actually a good idea because when I visited the glacier, the Perita Moreno, I was actually looking at the glacier and thinking, I don't know much about it. And I always find glaciers extremely fascinating. And then I heard that there's a glacier museum, uh, eight kilometers out of town, which is really interesting. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go see the glacier museum, learn a bit more about glaciers. And then there's another nice spot uh, to check out. Um, so that's just what I'm gonna do today. Uh, have a little look around uh, El Calafate. I also managed to find a new selfie stick. It is, wait, let me show you. This is the one that I found, which is basically, it's a selfie stick for a phone. So uh, on the top here, there was a holder for a phone, but if you take it off, then you end up with this. And I have the same kind of mount here, so I can just screw that on. And then I can use it for my GoPro. So I was actually surprised that I managed to find something because GoPro stuff is hard to find. You only find proper GoPro accessories in the big cities. And I'm not in a big city and I won't be for quite some time. So I was already thinking, oh, this is gonna be difficult. But then I found this one in the local shop. It, it said on the box, it said in big letters, made in China. Quality doesn't seem to be super good. But uh, better than nothing, I would say. So at least I have a selfie stick again. Uh, I don't know if I can use it uh, uh, on this mount. I don't know if, if, <laughs> if that'll work, but at least I can, you know, do the whole selfie uh, thing again. So that is good news. Yeah, so I left my bag still uh, here, which is actually uh, quite nice. Normally I don't take all my bags off. I rarely do that, but um, now that they're off, it's actually quite nice because if I then park at the museum and go inside, I don't have to worry about my stuff. I only have this uh, bag. Uh, that's the, the bike cover, which is inside, but I'm sure that will be fine. So you can, if I can fit through this little door again. What a location for a museum, right? <laughs> you wouldn't expect in this landscape, there's a glacier museum. Beautiful spot. Oh, it's not very busy. I actually hope it's open. because There doesn't seem to be anybody around. I think it should be open, according to my information, but oh, maybe it's nice and quiet. It's probably the time of the day that all the tourist groups are all at the Perita Moreno Glacier. Maybe. Okay, muy bien. <laughs> ah, they open in five minutes. See? So, I am early, apparently. Got my ticket, let's go in. It's very dark here. Okay, check this out. <laughs> See, this explains pretty well that you have uh, basically three zones in a glacier. You have the accumulation zone, which is the coldest, and this is, this is where snow turns into ice this area then here is the equilibrium zone and here you have the 
ablation zone. I think, yeah, ablation. So this is where the, the ice is carving off. And that's what you see when at the Purito Moreno, I saw like the big chunks of ice falling off. So that was that ablation zone, which is right there. But it's still then growing from the back. It's always growing and moving forward. Very interesting museum. Uh, and yeah, here it also said that the per Perito Moreno Glacier, where I was in the last video, has been pretty much uh, stable in size for the last 90 years. It always moving forward, backward, forward, backwards. And in 1996, they measured um, the ice was 700 meters thick at the center line of the glacier. So at the front where I was standing, it's a lot thinner. So there's like 50 or 60 meters, but more towards the origin of the glacier, it was 700 meters thick. It's just incredible, isn't it? Where are you from? Holland. Yeah. Take one, Tristan. You can leave the bar in here, okay? <laughs> I am in a ice bar. Look at that, I'm gonna put my uh, wands on. I think that this bar is actually made from ice from the glacier. <laughs> and so uh, with my entrance ticket, uh, I believe I have 25 minutes of drinking as much as I want. So I'm kind of wishing that I took a bus here now. Because <laughs> uh, obviously uh, with the no, I'm not gonna go drinking. I don't know if they also have uh, non-alcoholic drinks. It definitely is chilly uh, out here. Ah, see, it is uh, minus 8.1 degrees in here. I'm the only one in the bar. I've actually never been to an ice bar before. I'm gonna try and sit down in this super charming thing. <laughs> Another very random experience that I can take off my list. Having a drink in an ice bar, middle of the day, by myself, in where am I? Calafate, Argentina. No? I am gonna hop on the no and then uh, ride to another place uh, where there's something to see, which is also a little bit out of town, but then on the other side of town. So let's go there now. What a view, right? There we go again. Friends, not really. Good dogs. Okay, 
So this is where I go. I'm going. Punta Walichu. Sitio Archeologico. And I'm heading straight towards that very mean looking weather. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can manage it uh, without rain. I put something wrong on the navigation. I thought it was still 18 kilometers, but I think I'm already here. So it's not too bad. Okay, let's go have a look. Oh, here it's beautiful weather. I was a bit worried I was gonna ride that weather, but it was a lot closer than I thought. Ah, see, so this was also discovered by Francisco Moreno. That's the one I told you that was the, the glacier Perito Moreno. It was named after him. By the conditions, I walk to the promontory. I make an interesting discovery. The steep cliffs are all covered by handmade paintings up to Lake Argentino. And the painted shapes I copy from the steep walls of Punta Valicia, as I have named this Promontory. Never heard of a promontory. Don't know what it is, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Hola. Bien. Bien. Sí. Y tú? Bien. Vienes sola? Sí. Quieres hacer la excursión, la caminata? Sí. ¿De dónde eres? Holanda. Holanda. Sí. Bien, el recorrido que nosotros ofrecemos este, uh -huh. ¿sí? está marcado con números desde el punto 1 hasta el punto 27. Dale. Entonces por cada punto que vamos recorriendo, el audio guía que vas a llevar te va dando información. Ah, ok. Unos eh, 40 minutos aproximadamente para poder hacer la excursión. Okay. Okay. So, as you can see, I have an audio guide which is going to tell me everything. And uh, I'm going to uh, do this walk. Oh. I'm going to do this walk. Uh, I can't really show you. And then uh, whenever they say something interesting on the audio, I will tell you. So this is the biggest cave. And you can already see some of the paintings here. And they dated the paintings to be 4,000 years old. But the people that stayed here were probably making fires to cook because they found molecules of guanaco fat into these, uh, in these rocks. And they believe that the paintings that were made here, they were not for decoration or for fun, but they had some sort of ceremonial uh, function. I'm not sure if I'm actually still in the right path. <laughs> so, I'm supposed to walk here, but it starts to get a little bit more windy. See, this is clearly hand imprint. Right. Amazing, right? So, I finished the audio uh, trip. Now, what's your name? Gonzalo. Gonzalo. Gonzalo is going to show me the El Calafate plant, which grows here a lot. ¿Cómo se llama? Dino. Es esta planta de aquí. Sí. Y este es el fruto de Calafate. Ah. ¿Y en cuánto tiempo para comer? Eh, un mes más. Un mes más. El parque nacional de Perito Moreno sí. ya está para comer. Ah, sí? Sí, porque es el lugar más útil, aquí es más seco. Ah, aquí es más seco. Entonces, el proceso de maduración allá no lo Ah, entiendo. Sí. ¿Y el, el pueblo, el calafate, sí. se llama por, porque hay, hay muchos acá o porque...? El... No, se refiere a una leyenda indígena. Mucho gusto. Chao, gracias. Well, that was interesting. I hope you could hear any of that because it's windy again. But uh, no, it's an interesting place. I mean... Um, yeah, 4,000 years ago there were already people here and there's another place in Argentina which I'm also planning to visit uh, which has even older paintings and I think those are also better preserved it's called I think Cueva de los, Cueva de los Manos and I'll visit it at another time but uh, this was for me a nice kind of teaser of uh, some of the archaeological things that are uh, to see around here Oh, suddenly with this wind it uh, starts to get really cold so Time to go.
Okay, so I had a really nice day. It was interesting. I learned some new things. And now I'm gonna spend the rest of the afternoon to <laughs> edit this video and try to upload it. So that's my plan. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And then I'll see you in the next video.